Good morning. Thank you for viewing our live stream today. You know, each week, I look forward to you joining us online. And it is my prayer that God will continue to bless each of you according to your needs during this period of COVID-19. And so let me start by asking, do you have an unanswered prayer this morning? Are you waiting to hear or see an answer to your prayer request to the Lord? I'm sure that because of the state that we're living in during this time, that many of us have been fervently praying to the Lord for healing and deliverance and protection and provision. Been praying to the Lord for our families and for ourselves. And some got job situations going on, and then hopefully all of us are praying for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But when we pray and don't see answers to our prayer, we might just find ourselves feeling disappointed and discouraged and asking the question, why? Why, Lord? But this is not the way God wants us to respond to what seems to us an unanswered prayer. Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, that we ought to always pray and not lose heart. The Lord, he knows that we will be tempted to lose heart by what seems like an unanswered prayer. But instead of losing heart and asking why during our times of discouragement, we should be asking what? What, Lord, is it that's hindering an answer to my prayer? So in today's message titled, If We Ask, I'll be identifying factors that just may, that just might be delaying answers to your prayer. But before we get started, let us pray. Dear God, our Father, thank you now in the holy and the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for being with us today. Then even while we're in the midst of this, still this virus, this COVID-19, even while we're going through, God, we thank you that we don't have to go through it alone. Thank you now for being with us. Thank you, Lord. You have assured us in your word that you never leave us nor forsake us. God, we thank you for that. Now, I pray that you will use me as you, as you have, have me to speak to your people. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The scripture for our text, uh, if on this message, I mean, if we ask, it's found in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. And the word of the Lord, it read on this wise. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we will have the petitions that we desire of him. Amen. In this text, we see that the results of our prayers are conditional. And they are based on a series of three ifs. So today I'll be discussing first, if we ask for anything. Second, if we ask in his will. And third, if we ask, no one he hears. Prayer is vital to our life. Prayer indicates a relationship with God. And just imagine if you had a marriage where no one ever uttered a word. And I can see some of you out there laughing already. And some of you are thinking, they said, boy, I'd be in heaven. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Because relationships, they count on communication. And our relationship with God, it counts on prayer because that's how we communicate with him. Keep in mind, when we pray, we are talking to God. But when we read his word, God is talking to us. 
Scripture often encourages us to pray. So I'd like to encourage you to pray our way. The believer is to develop a constant spirit of prayer, to maintain an unbroken consciousness of God's presence. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, then you have a duty to persevere in prayer. Any believer who is not always praying is not assured of God's protection. So now let's go ahead and let's get started. Let's look at our first outline. If we ask for anything. The A part of verse 14 of our text in 1 John chapter 5 starts by saying, and this is the confidence that we have in him. Now, the confidence that this verse speaks of is tied to verse 13, the prior verse. John emphasized in verse 13 the fact that those who put their faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, can know with confidence that they have eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And after emphasizing the confidence that we have in eternal life, John continued by saying that if we ask anything, here we have John telling believers that our confidence in prayer is founded on our assurance of eternal life. In other words, we can have confidence in prayer. Why? Because we have the assurance of our faith, which is eternal life. Now, if you just have faith, that when this life is over, that the Lord is going to come and get you and take you back to heaven with him and live with him forever. If you got that kind of faith, surely you ought to have enough faith that, that the Lord is going to take care of you right here, right now, while you are here on earth. Prayer is not optional for God's children. It's absolutely essential. If you're a child of God, I ought to be praying. You shouldn't be no stranger to prayer. Not if you belong to the Lord. Because if you don't pray, you are trusting in yourself and not living by faith in God. John wrote these verses to encourage us to pray and to do so more faithfully. Having confidence, not in ourselves, but in Christ. So how do we exercise the faith that we have? Well, we ask. We ask with a claim on receipt of an answer. Verse 14 says that this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, what the Lord is saying, the Lord is said, come on, ask me. You can ask me anything. Isn't that something? The one who created the heavens and the earth saying, come on, ask me. You can ask me. Anything. So let's be an asking people. Let's be a praying people. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Jesus said, Ask and it will be given unto you. And you know, some folk, if you go to ask, ask them something, they'll start frowning up. You know, and it's like when you get there, you know not to ask them nothing. Because you can see the look on their face. The Lord is not doing that. He said, Come on. And I can just see God ask him with a smile, come on and ask me. Children, come on and ask your heavenly father. And then while you're asking, you're relying on what God has said and acknowledging his promises in his word. That means that you are affirming that what God said in his word applies to you. It's one thing to be Reading, it, you know, is what something that applies to the basses. But you know, that's great news. You can't get better news that when it's some good news, and then the maker and creator of this earth, he let you know that it applies to you. You just can't get better news than that. You must know that God is no respecter of person. So if you meet the conditions stated in His Word, then you can ask anything, and the promise of receiving what you ask will be yours just as much as it is anyone else. Ask. That's what the Lord is telling you. Come on, ask. The confession of your mouth should be consistent with the promises you are believing. What you talk is just simply saying, you know, that what you are saying ought to be going hand in hand. It ought to be, ought to be me hand in glove with what you believe in in your heart. 
But you confess him with your mouth. The Lord has said, ask me. God is a loving God. And if we ask for anything, we will also see that he's a generous giver. You know, that's why it's so easy for the Lord to tell us that he loves a cheerful giver. And the Lord loves a cheerful giver simply because he's a generous giver. He show us one thing that the Lord won't let you do. He won't let you out giving. God just wants us to ask of him anything in prayer. This means that we can ask and should pray to God about everything. God cares about our whole life. Nothing is too big, nothing too small for us to pray to God about. Ask about anything, but pray about everything. Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. God is telling you today, ask. That's all you got to do. You know, his ear is always tuned in to the cry of a trusted soul, Ask. In verse 14, Paul said, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything. Now, although we have the privilege of asking anything, our prayer should be more than just casting our wish list. Up to heaven. You know, God, give me this, give me that, give me that, want that, pick that, bring that. It's not just a wish list. It don't work like that. Our prayer should be rooted and grounded in the understanding of God's will, which leads us to the second ill in our outline. Which is, if we ask in his will, very important qualifier for the word, if we ask Anything is that if we ask in his will. Now, before you just take off and run and say, well, I can just go ask God for anything. Well, you better be sure you get the second out of line. That was said, ask in his will. So how can you know what the will of God is? You might be saying, you know, I want to pray it in his will. I want to ask in his will. If I knew what that was, well, the answer can be found in the word of God for the scriptures. Tell us what to pray for. For instance, scripture tell us to pray for our daily bread. Tell us to pray for shelter and for our needs. Tell us to pray for our enemies. Pray that we don't enter into temptation. Pray, pray, pray. We need to be praying for government officials. Pray for the relief from affliction. Pray for the healing of fellow believers and the, uh, for the nation. We need to pray for the salvation of others. We need to pray for mercy and forgiveness. For our sin, we need to pray, 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 pray. And then it will let us know that how we ought to pray. How we ought to pray is with the right motives. And then we need to pray with a spirit of forgiveness of others. Pray with praise and thanksgiving and persistence. And then now, part of praying in God's will is believing that whether the answer to your prayer is yes, no, or wait. What we have to, we, we just have to let this be the bedrock of our belief. We have to accept God's response. So, Master, I don't care. Now, I have grown enough. That ought to be our prayer. I have grown enough. Now, I'm bringing my petitions to you. But then, and then, as I'm waiting for the answer, now, if you come back and say, yes, no, or wait, I want you to know, Lord, that I, I accept. Your response. And not only do I accept your response, but then I'm going to submit to your will. And, and, and what I'm going to keep doing, regardless of what, what the answer I get, I'm going to keep praying without cease. And so then, when you pray, rely on the Spirit of God. Because sometimes now, we can get so distraught that we can't pray. Sometime in this life, you know, sometimes with the ups and downs and the setbacks and the disappointment and all of the things that can happen to us in life, sometimes that we can get ready to go to the Lord in prayer and we are so distraught that we can't pray. But thank God for the Holy Spirit who will pray for us. He will intercede for us and will interpret our groan with words that cannot be uttered. Prayer must be viewed not as our attempt to get God to see things from our point of view, but as our attempt to see things from God's point of view, as stated in his word. 
when we grow in the word of God, study and meditate on the word of God and seek the will of God, then we'll start asking uh, for ourselves, not what we want, but what God wants. And then when we, when we do that, we'll start taking our prayer to another whole level. Could you imagine if we keep growing in God's word and we get past the point you know, up to, up to so far, we go and we say, now, Lord, now, now, Lord, now, I need you to come line up over here with me. Lord, I, I need to take you over here. And, Lord, I need you to come do this. And we'll do all of that instead of wondering, Lord, what is it that you want out of my life? Lord, what do you want me? And the more that we start beginning to start lining up with what the Lord's will is for our life, when we finally start getting to doing that, what we would do, we would see our prayer line go to another whole level. For each of our prayer requests, we should mentally or, or vocally ask ourselves, what possible reason do I have to think that God will answer this prayer? And if you're sitting up there thinking, well, you done prayed and said, well, Lord, I, you know, I know you're not going to do that. I'm not leaving. You probably you probably right. He's probably not gonna do it because that's something that's probably not even in his will. Now, we should be able to answer that question from his word. What possible reason do I have to think that God will answer this prayer? We should be able to answer that question from his word. That should be easy. And by this, we'll know what we are asking is in his will. So, when you go to ask something that you ought to be able to can tell yourself, it ought not have to make it to God if you wonder if it's going to be in your will or not. And you, we ought to be able to figure that out. The only thing you've done, you say, well, how do I do that? Just look in his word. Is this lining up in the word of God, what I'm asking for? The most powerful prayers in the Bible are prayers which understand the will of God and ask him to perform it. Our prayers are never on a sure foundation that when they're grounded in Scripture because it is there that God's will is revealed. When we pray God's word back to him, now God go honor his word. Come down to our word. Our word might be honored and it might not. But one thing about it, not one word of God will fail. When our prayers are Bible prayers, we have the assurance of God's promises. It is by prayer that we seek God's will, embrace it, and then align ourselves with it. Every true prayer should rest on the promises of not my will, but thy will be done. You know, we get the picture of that, or we get the example of that uh, from with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. When the Lord was getting ready to have to get ready to go toward the cross. And then here he is out there having to go through, have all of this pressure and everything, getting ready to have to go and die for all of mankind. And, and even Jesus said, Lord, let this cup, he talking to his father in heaven, Lord, let this cup pass from me. But then he said, not my will, but let thy will be done. That's the same way it ought to be with us. When we are, when we are going to the Lord in prayer, it's not my will, but let thy will be done. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1 tells us that God works all things after the counsel of his will. It's all in the counsel of God. So everything that happened take place because God decreed it. And if anything could happen outside of his will, then he would not be in control of the universe. Plainly stated that if it could happen outside of God's will, then he wouldn't be God. But God knows everything. And he has assured us that he loves us far more than the best earthly father loves his children. God knows everything. And let me give you an example. In Jeremiah chapter 1, God knows everything. In verse 5, the Lord said that he knew Jeremiah before he was formed in his mother's womb. God knows everything, I tell you. He told us that in Luke chapter 12, verse 7, the Lord said that even the very hairs of your head a number. God knows everything. He told us in Psalms 94 verse 11. Tell us that, that the Lord knows your very thought. The Lord knows everything. He knows all about you. The Lord knows you book, chapter, and verse. He knows you. So, 
it only makes sense to submit to and pray for his will for our lives and for others. So when we ask, ask in his will. You won't regret it. The Lord is saying, you can come ask me anything. But not only that now, it's a more qualifying word with that. When you come ask me anything, now you be sure you're asking what's in my will. Now, before we move on to the third here, let's do a quick recap. In the first outline, which was, if we ask for anything, we learned that our confidence in, in prayer is founded on our assurance of eternal life. This means that we can and should pray and ask God for anything. God cares about our whole life. And nothing is too big or too small for us to pray for to a loving God about. And then next we saw in the second outline, if we ask in his will that our prayers are never on a sure foundation than when they're grounded in scripture because it is better that God's will is revealed and every true prayer should rest on the foundation of not my will, but let thine will. Let thine will be done. Now we are up to our third and final outline, we'll see if we ask knowing he hears. Verse 15 of our text, it tells us that, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. The Lord is saying, come on and ask me. Come ask me for anything. But he's also telling us, so now when you come ask me, come ask within my perfect will. And then not only is he saying, not come ask anything and come in my perfect will, but here's going to be the third piece, the linchpin to, to, to the prayer. When he said, you ask me already knowing that I hear you. And what the Lord is, is letting us know that when you ask that kind of way, it's like you're asking a loving father and he's there listening to you. And he's listening to you and he's taking it all in because he's getting ready to spring into action when you finish, start answering that prayer. God is a prayer hearing God. And since he hears everything and even knows the unspoken secrets that lay within the chambers of our heart, John lets us know that whatsoever we ask that is in the will of God, we shall receive. And there's some advantages to that now. The advantages of such a great privilege is that if we know that he heareth us. And, and, and not only that, but if we know that we can ask anything that is in his will. And then not only that, but then we can also know that God will grant us whatever we desire. So, when you follow the roadmap of the ifs in this text, you will know that God will answer your prayer. And after this message, that, you know, there's no reason now that you shouldn't start getting some prayer through. We didn't give you the roadmap. Look, because our fellowship with God is personal and it's intimate, like the relationship between a loving parent and a child, we are not merely told that we may approach God with confidence, but that we have confidence because we know that God hears us. His ear is always tuned in to the cry of a trusted soul. So to say that God hears our prayer means more than God acknowledges that we are praying. Hearing implies that there is a response and that the response is favorable. So, the promise that God hears us is the assurance that God listens to us favorably and then he grants us our request whatsoever we ask in him. The Lord is telling you today, he said, come on, ask me. Come on and ask what's in my perfect will. And then when you ask me, ask me knowing that I'm already here, and I know, and I'm here. The declaration of our text 
is that if we ask, then we must not allow. And you know, sometimes it's going to be something to try, the enemy going to try to throw some roadblocks up there. So when you ask now, you must not allow your circumstances to stop you from taking God at his word. When you ask, we must be fully persuaded that God has the power to do what he has promised. If we ask, we must know that God heals. And if we wish to receive what we ask, if you, go, if you think you're going to get what you receive, then you just got to know that God heals you. Now in closing, there may be times when God may seem silent to our prayers. So if whatever you ask in prayer has not happened yet, don't assume it can't or won't. Don't give up. Just remember that the results of our prayers are conditional and are based on these three years. The first is if we ask for anything. This means that we can and should pray and ask God for anything. God is a loving and generous giver who cares about our whole life. Nothing is too big, nothing is too small for us to pray to God about. Nothing too big, too, pop, too small to take it to the Lord in prayer. And the next is if we ask in his will. This lets us know that our prayers are never on a sure foundation that when they're grounded in scripture because God's will is revealed in his word. Every true prayer should rest on the foundation of not my will, but thy will be done. And third and final, if we ask knowing he heard, from this we learn that God is a prayer hearing God. Knowing that God hears us is our assurance that he Listen to us. He's hearing. He's listening. And then he favorably grants us our request. Whatsoever, what is he going to grant you? Whatsoever you ask in his will. So now, when you pray with these three ifs and nine, the next thing for you to do is to have the faith that God will answer your prayer in his own time. And if you, if you wait for an answer, uh, be assured that the Lord is drawing out of your faith a deeper reliance and trust in him. If you not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm sorry to have to tell you, then there is no way that you can pray according to the will of God. But you can change that situation. You can get off of the wrong track and get on the right track. Unless your prayer is that God would save you from your sin. That's the only way that you're going to get off the wrong track and get on the right track. John chapter 9 verse 31 says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So the promise of the if in our text is only for believers in Christ. But you can still get off the wrong track and get on the right one. If you want the confidence that God will hear and answer your prayer, I encourage you to invite the Lord into your life today in accordance with Romans 10 and 9, which said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's all it takes to get off the wrong track and get on the right track. What say? Now you too, you, you're going to come into the fold now. Now you too can send your petitions up to the Lord in prayer. In today's message, if we ask, our text shows us some important truths about prayer. God has given all believers the confidence in knowing that if we ask for anything, if we ask in his will, and if we ask knowing that he will hear our petition. Then we will have whatsoever we desire of him. God bless you. Please bow with me in prayer. Dear God, our Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word today. Lord, we thank you for your word. If we ask, Lord, we thank you for how you have opened the door for us. You let us know that we could ask 
and we could ask you for anything. But then, Lord, you put some qualifying words with it. You said that if we ask in your will. And then, Lord, you even let us know that we can ask for anything, ask within your will, but then let's pin into it all. You told us that when we ask, I already know that you hear us. And Master, we just thank you for being such a loving God. And then you let us know, Lord, that when when we when we have the faith to know that our prayer is not falling on death ears, then you are then master that you will be right there to answer our prayer for what we have asked you for. Lord, we thank you today for just being that kind of a God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have a prayer request or would like to invite the Lord into your life, please email me at pastor at pmbcfellowship.org. And you can also email me your questions on today's message. And if you have any comments, feel free to send us a Facebook message. To give your tithes, offerings, and donations, visit pmbcfellowship.org and click the Give button on the top right of the page. Remember that God loves a cheerful giver. Remember we saw back in the text today that he's a generous giver. Look, thanks again for tuning in. And remember, if we ask anything according to his will, knowing that he will hear our prayers, then we shall have the confidence that he will answer our prayers. And you know what? That's a promise. That's right here in his word. Now, I look forward to you viewing our live feed on next Sunday at 11 a.m. You know where? Right here at the pastor's desk. Until then, take care and may God bless you.